every horse with the speed of light, a cloud of dust, and a haughty high silver. The Lone Ranger. <laughs> General Mills, makers of Cheerios, the ready-to-eat oat cereal that gives you go power, and Wheaties, the breakfast of champions, presents by special recording, The Lone Ranger. The champions of a not born. Yes, sir. Get on your way. Get on your way. Get on your way with Wheaties. Don't ever doubt it. Champions are made, not born. You can get there. For example, take the story of Wheaties champion Stan Musial of the St. Louis Cardinals. Young Stan was willed no claim to fame, no magic way to learn the game. He had to sweat and give his all, learning to field and hit that ball. Sure, Wheaties was his breakfast call. Today they call him Stan the Man, still and always a Wheaties fan. Stan Musial has been powering up with Wheaties right along, 19 years. Good for Stan, good for you. There's a whole kernel of wheat in every Wheaties plate. Now watch Stan belt that ball. Hey, hey. He's on his way, on his way, he's on his way, on his way, get on your way, with Wheaties, cause champions are made, not born, yes sir, get on your way, get on your way, get on your way with Wheaties, breakfast of champions. With his faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those swelling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. Come on, Silver. Let's go, we saw. I'll Silver. Hooray! <laughs> It was a pitch black night when the year's heaviest rainstorm lashed the hills, flooded the streams, and beat against a log house in a desolate mountain area. For the past two years, the house had been a hideaway for a small, shifty eyed man whose name, according to handbills offering a reward for his capture, was Baldy Bryson. By the light of an open fireplace, Baldy was cleaning the rifle and six gun that were never far from his side when he heard a rap on the door. <laughs> Who can that be? Baldy loaded his six gun as he crossed the room to the heavily bolted door. That's Baldy. You mean that? Who are you? Moose Barney. Who do I sound like? Moose Barney. Just a minute. Oh, I'm glad to see you, Moose. Come on in. I hope you'd still be here in our old hideout. Yep, I stayed here. Safest place I know of. Yeah, but it's been mighty lonesome since a year ago when you... When I got restless and made the fool mistake of going to Bob's Bill, I was my place. Yeah. Why do you do it? Moose, I never could figure out how the sheriff in Boxville knew you were wanted and got the drop on you. You think Sheriff Pindle cut me? Well, I didn't know. All I knew was what I heard in the crossroads store near here. Yeah, what was that? You were caught, tried, and jailed for 20 years in the territorial prison. That's true. But it wasn't Sheriff Pringle who cut me. It was a lone ranger. And for that, I'm going to kill him. How'd you get out of jail? I was a trustee. Working in the warden's office. When my chance came, I knocked out the warden, forged his name to a pass, and walked right through the gate. <laughs> yeah, it's mighty slick. You know, while I was in prison, I learned a lot I learned how we could get the Lone Ranger. Yeah? Also, I talked to a man who was doing time for embezzlement. He'd been a bookkeeper for the railroad. I know all about gold shipments. One train to hold up will make us rich. Two of us can't rob a train. There'll be five of us. Who are the other three? Blaze Lufkin and the two Martin brothers. Yeah, I've heard of them, but I don't know them. I don't know them either. But I do know they're mighty tough hombres and fast gunslingers. And I reckon they've heard of me. <laughs> Everyone's heard of you, Moose. You know, I figure Blaze and the Martins will be glad to work with me. It's 
especially if they know there's a chance to square things with a lone ranger. They got grudges against him? Yeah. They did three years in jail because of him. I uh, told them to come here if they weren't interested. Here? Yeah, I'll hide out. That's right. I gave them directions for finding the place. <laughs> and I bet they show up. A few days later, the Lone Ranger and Toto, riding along the floor of a canyon, noticed that the river running through the canyon was much wider and deeper than usual. I've never seen the river as high as this, Toto. It was even higher, several feet higher just after the rain. That's right. High water mark on canyon wall. Yes, I noticed it. The entire floor of the canyon was underwater. I wonder if the bridge is damaged. Bridge across the top of canyon. Water not go that high. Oh, but the timbers that support the center of the bridge are anchored on each bank of the river. The flood washed out those timbers, the bridge... We do know, Kimasabi. Turn in canyon just ahead. Then we see bridge. Come on, Silver. Come, Scout. Come, fella. Both the masked man and his Indian companion were watching for the bridge as their horses followed the bend in the canyon. Oh, no, the timbers are down. You see? That bridge is no longer safe. There's a big snag in the... Man on horse, start over bridge from far back. He can't see if the timbers are down. You on the bridge, go back. Him not hear you. Shot might get his attention. Man, look this way. Go back. Him not pay attention. Bridge, go. It's the last thing. Hold over. Hold on, While the falling man and horse were in midair, the lone ranger leaped from the saddle and began to unbuckle his gun belt. Man in water now. Stay on the bank and be ready with a rope. I'll try to get him. The uh-huh. man pulled off his boots, tossed his hat to Toto, and plunged into the water. He swam hard, angling against the current toward the man in midstream. His path was made more difficult and dangerous by the floating wreckage of the bridge. But presently, he reached the motionless form. On the shore, Toto held his rope coiled, ready to throw, as he moved along the bank to stay abreast of the Lone Ranger who, with his burden, was carried downstream by the current. Inch by inch, the masked man neared the shore. Then Toto threw his lariat. Uh, uh, I have it. Hold tight, Kimasabi. Meet fully at the shore. On the dry bank of the river, the masked man soon learned that his effort to save a life had been wasted. He's dead, Toto. Uh, hard blow on head. Maybe that's what killed him. Looked like skull broken. He was probably struck by part of the bridge. His horse not hurt. Horse reached bank near Ben downstream. Him come this way. Toto, we know this man. I didn't notice his face until I pushed his hair back. Ah, uh, me remember. Him a outlaw. Blaze Lofgren. That's right. We captured him three, four years ago. Well, his death is no loss to society. He has a letter in his pocket, written in pencil. Uh-huh. And who writes the blaze? Moose Varney. Now him, outlaw too. Yes, he wrote this letter just after he escaped from prison a few weeks ago. And he mentions us. Uh, what did he say? This letter is an invitation to join Moose Varney and his partner. Listen to this part, Toto. Moose says, I have inside information that will make it easy for us to do two things. One, get away with $50,000. Two, trap and kill the Lone Ranger and Toto. Oh. Now, what do you mean by inside information? I'd like to know. That to tell where Moose hiding? Yes, it gives directions and landmarks to reach the hideout. We take law there? Yeah, we might capture Moose, but we'd never learn what inside information he has. That's right. For him, plenty tight lips. According to this letter, Moose has never seen Blaze, Barney. I could pose as Blaze. But Kimasabi, you... Lighten my skin to look like prison pallor. Put a white streak through my hair. Ride Blaze's horse. Yes, I'm sure I could fool Moose, Barney, long enough to learn a few things. You take plenty big risk. I'll give you a copy of the direction for reaching the hideout so you can bring the sheriff and a posse. Blaze's horse here now. There's a waterproof covering on that blanket roll. See if Blaze carried extra clothing, will you? Uh, uh, me look. We're about the same size. I could wear his clothes. 
The rap lays Lockskin in a blanket and tie him to Silver's saddle, so you'll be able to take him to Sheriff Pendle in Boxville. Here, try clothes, Tim McCuffey. Good. I'll change the bill and disguise my face. Uh, what we do with your clothes? Pack them in Silver's saddlebags and take them with you. Oh, but them wet, Tim McCuffey. Me build fire, dry them out, then pack them. All right, Tonto. There's no hurry about reaching Boxville. But I want to reach Moose Varney as soon as possible. After the Lone Ranger, disguised as Blaze Lockwin, rode away on the outlaw's horse, Tonto spent about an hour drying and packing the clothing of his friend. He was extinguishing the fire he'd built when the Martin brothers approached the top of the canyon some distance away. Oh, 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 boy. Jeb, the bridge is down. Hmm. That means we'll have to go around the canyon to reach Moose Varney's place. Yeah, that'll be five or six hours of riding. Well, I'd ride five or six days to get the Lone Ranger. Hey, Jeb, speaking of the Lone Ranger, look down there, downstream on the floor of the canyon. Yeah. White horse, a paint horse, and an Indian. That looks like the Lone Ranger's horse. It is. The engine is cut off. It's something across the saddle of the white horse. Looks like a man's body wrapped in a blanket. It is. Maybe Moose Varney's killed the Lone Ranger. Yeah, that's what he said in his letter he planned to do. Well, we gotta know. The engine's starting downstream, leading Silver. Come on, we'll follow him. Let's get up. Come on, get up. Come on. We'll continue our Lone Ranger adventure in just a moment. When boys line up to run a race, galloping garden sets the pace. He comes in first because he knows he's got gold power from Cheerios. Yes, he's got gold power. There he goes. He's stealing his Cheerios, Cheerios, Cheerios. And so will you, once you're eating Cheerios every breakfast. You'll say the Cheerios taste simply wonderful, too. They're already cooked. Shaped like little round O's and just full of good toasted oat flavor. Pour out a big bowlful, add fresh milk, and pitch in. You can almost feel the go power. For a Cheerios breakfast is one of the finest ways you can get the vitamins, proteins, and minerals your body needs. A bowl of Cheerios and milk really starts your day right. Helps give you the good red blood, strong bones, and muscles. Go power. You'll get it from Cheerios. Try it, and folks will say... He's feeling his Cheerios. Now to continue. It was after dark when Tonto reached the town of Boxville. He left the horses in the open area behind the sheriff's office and entered the office through the back door. time later, the Martin brothers, who had followed Tonto from the canyon and left their horses some distance behind the sheriff's office, walked softly through the darkness. They were nearing an open window when they heard the lawman exclaim, Blaze Lawson, Tonto, are you sure? Hey, that's the sheriff's voice. What's he saying about Blaze Lawson? I'd like to know. The back one is open. Let's go close and listen. Yeah, maybe we'll find out about the dead man. Man, have to be learned, man dead. No man should take good look at face. Dead man, Blaze Lawson. Hey. Must have been the hand of fate that put him on that bridge when it went down. Did you leave the body in the canyon? No. We wrap it in blankets and put it on silver. Bring it here. Uh, oh, oh, wait, sir, wait. Lone Ranger not want anyone know Blaze's dead. Well, why do you want to keep it secret? In Blaze's pocket, Lone Ranger find letter from Moose Varney. Written after you escaped? That's right. Hey, according to that, it's Blaze Lawson inside the blanket. Oh, Moose. Ask Blaze to hide out. Tell him how get there. Him say big robbery plan. Same kind of letter Moose said. Be quiet, will you, Dick? If Lone Ranger disguise face, change clothes, ride outlaw's horse, him take letter and go to hide out. Me have copy of letter. Hey, Jeb, come with me. Yeah, where to? Get to our horses. All right, Dick, but I'd like to hear some more. We've heard enough to know that the Lone Ranger went to Moose Farney's hideout. Yeah, he's probably there by this time. Yeah, posing as Blaze Lofton. What a surprise he'll have when we tell Moose the truth. You figure on starting for the hideout right now? Sure, the sooner the better. We'll ride all night to get there. Easy, silly boy. Come on, get up. Come on, get up. The following morning, Moose and Baldy Bryson sat in the hideout cabin drinking coffee. 
The Lone Ranger, playing the part of Blaze Lofgren, had not yet come out of the bedroom. What do you think, Blaze? Well, he's a mighty smooth talking hombre. And I like the way he wears his gun, tied low. <laughs> sure looks as if he knew how to handle him. <laughs> his record's proof of that. When are you going to tell him the plan? I don't know. Morning, sir. Well, howdy. We didn't know you were up. Uh, we didn't hear you open the bedroom door. Any reason why I should make a noise opening a door? Oh. No, no, of course not. Sit down here at the table, please. Oh, thanks. Hey, I'll have your ham and eggs ready in no time. And I'll pour your coffee. Well, thanks again. <laughs> I reckon you heard me saying some complimentary things about you. I heard you say you didn't know when you'd tell me your plans. Well, I've uh, waited since last night to hear them. That's long enough. I figured on waiting until the Martin brothers got here. There's no use going over everything twice. You're not sure the Martins are coming. No, but... But you may be dead sure I'm leaving. Unless I know what you have in mind. I don't mind telling you, Blaze. Your letter mentioned inside information. Yeah. What information have you uh, concerning the Lone Ranger? I know he's a good friend of a certain party. Where'd you learn that? From the chaplain at the prison. What do you uh, plan to do about it? We'll send a letter to the Padre, saying how badly the Lone Ranger's needed in a certain place. Like, uh, for example, this hideout. And if he did come here, what would you do? <laughs> Plenty. We'd capture him and his Indian pile, hog time, and get square for a lot of things before we finally put him out of their misery. You mentioned a $50,000 deal. It's a railroad robbery. Prison is full of men who tried to rob trains and failed. Yeah, but we won't fail. I know just when payroll cash is sent to the gold mine region and how it's guarded. I've got all the facts. Where'd you get them? From a man in prison. He worked for the railroad. What's his name? Well, I, I don't know if I should mention What's him. his name? Why not tell him, Moose? All right, it's Joe West. I'll have to hear a lot more about your plans before I agree to go along with you. Moose, there's two horsemen are outside. Uh, grab your gun. <laughs> Be ready for trouble. I see them through the window. They're this mountain. Do they look like lawmen? No, but they look alike. Could be the Martin brothers. Yeah, who is it? It's Martin and Jen. Please, you and Baldy cover the door. All right. Are uh, you, Moose Varney? Yes, I am. You should be expecting it. Anyone I'm expecting carries a letter, I will. Here's your letter. Yeah, that does it. Come on in, gents, and welcome. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> this is Baldy Bryson, and uh, this is Blaze Lofton. Uh, Howdy. Howdy. You say, uh, Blaze Lofton? That's right. Yeah, I'm downright proud to meet you, Mr. Lofton. We've heard a lot about you. We sure have. Folks talk a lot about those guns of yours, too. They tell me you're a dead shot with them. While Deke Martin stood facing the Lone Ranger, Jeb crossed to the far side of the room so he was behind the back of the man who posed as Blaze Lofgren. Chance, why don't you sit down there? Hey, Blaze, your coffee's getting cold. Uh, I'll serve the ham and eggs and start some more. Just a minute. Before we sit down, I'd like to examine Mr. Lofgren's gun. In that case, you'll save a lot of time by sitting down. You mean you don't intend to let me see your guns? That's exactly what I mean. Well, oh, gents, there's no use starting an argument. The police don't want to draw his gun. We'll yes. draw for him. Yes. You're hey, covered. Get your hands up. That's it, Jed. What's your idea? Why are you drawing on Blaze? Blaze Lofgren's dead. Why, Ed? This man took his horse, clothes, and letter and come here in his place. Speak. You better be sure of that. I'm dead sure. Jeb and I were behind the sheriff's office where we saw Blaze Lofgren's body wrapped in a blanket. And we heard Tonto telling the sheriff about the Lone Ranger's plan to come here disguised as Blaze. What's that? Well, the Lone Ranger moved with speed, born of desperation. He grasped hey, Deke's hey, gun hand oh. and twisted his arm. In an instant, Deke became a human shield between his brother and the Lone Ranger. Shoot, you'll kill your brother. Hey. Suddenly, the grip on Deke's arm was released and a mighty shove sent the outlaw hurtling across the room. Hey, 
Smashing against Jeb. Both men fell to the floor. Moose and the Lone Ranger fired almost at the same instant. One bullet broke Moose Varney's arm, but the Lone Ranger didn't know it. White fire seemed to explode in his brain. His gun dropped. You got him, Moose. He dropped to the floor with blood showing on the side of his head. Oh, pretty, come on. Oh, let me kill him. Oh, hold on. If he's alive, let's keep him alive until he wakes up. And we'll really make him sweat. Hey, the window. An Indian. These six crooks. Oh, oh, Ford led through the window, hitting Deke in one leg and Baldy in the hand. Oh, Jeb was about to fire at the Indian oh. when the sheriff's six gun spoke from the doorway. Throw down your guns or we pay the cost of putting you on trial. Oh, you? Seeing the sheriff followed by two deputies, the wounded outlaws knew it would be suicide to continue the fight. Tonto leaped through the broken window and rushed to the side of his wounded friend. <laughs> The sheriff and his deputies sat in the hideaway cabin guarding their handcuffed prisoners while Toto worked in the bedroom, dressing the Lone Ranger's wound. The sheriff was saying, Moose, I reckon you know where you're going. Back to prison. And Baldy's going with you this time. The law's hunted him for a long time. Yeah, you've got nothing on us, Sheriff. No? We... Well, Deke, maybe you and your brother never heard of a charge of attempted murder. But you'll hear plenty about it when you go on trial. With your record, you get a long time in jail. I wish I'd killed that lone ranger. Well, if you had, all four of you would hang. Tonto. Sheriff. Me six wounds. How is the lone ranger? Bullet graze head. Hurt plenty, but not serious. Well, thank the good Lord for that. The worst thing that could happen to the West would be to lose the lone ranger. <laughs> Feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated is produced by Pendle Campbell Muir Incorporated. The part of the Lone Ranger is played by Brace Beamer. Your announcer, Fred Boyd. Listen to the Lone Ranger, brought to you by Special Recording Monday.